Hi, I'm BT, and today I'm going to use the Pilot Precise V5, the Moonman C1, and the Lamy Safari to draw a picture. And while I'm doing that, you're going to learn about the 44 caliber killer. Audio comes from NBC News Archives. Music is Arms Dealer by Anno Domini Beats. This is a police sketch of a suspect in one of the nastiest murder cases New York police have had come their way in a long time. The killer police are looking for is called the 44 caliber killer because of the weapon he has used. In a neighborhood of the Bronx called Pelham Bay and in Forest Hills near the famous tennis club, the killer has struck six times since last summer, and five are dead. Most of them, pretty young women, shot at close range on the sidewalk or in parked cars. 18-year-old Donna Loria was the first, killed last July. Then, Christina Freund, 26, a secretary, killed in January. Virginia Voscaricia, a 20-year-old co-ed, killed in March. And Valentina Suriani, 20, killed with her boyfriend, Alexander Esau, in April. The killer has taunted authorities by writing two letters. Police are convinced the letters are real. Both were signed, Son of Sam. Here the killer says, Mr. Breslin, sir, don't think that because you haven't heard from me for a while that I went to sleep. No, rather I am still here, like a spirit roaming the night, thirsty, hungry, seldom stopping to rest, anxious to please Sam. I love my work. Now the void has been filled. At the end of the letter, the killer wrote, not knowing what the future holds, I shall say farewell, and I will see you at the next job. Or should I say, you will see my handiwork at the next job. The New York Police Department's Dr. Harvey Schlossberg, one of the nation's better-known criminal psychologists, believes the killer has sexual inadequacies. As for the references to Sam... The way I see the, uh, the relationship to Sam uh, as the creator, as the driving force, as the hungry that can't be satisfied, I see the gun as Sam. Uh, Sam is the weapon which becomes the substitute phallic symbol. In New York, the search continues for the 44 caliber killer who has come to be known as the Son of Sam, the object of one of the biggest manhunts in this city's history. In the past year, the killer, believed to be a young man, has killed five people and wounded four. His victims, mostly young women with shoulder-length dark hair, usually shot at very close range while sitting in parked cars at night. They've been shot with a 44 caliber bulldog revolver, an especially deadly weapon. This is headquarters for one of the most intense manhunts in the history of New York, a search for the 44 caliber killer. Operating out of this office, over 50 of the city's best detectives pour over clues and run down leads. On the wall are snapshots of the victims, most of them pretty girls with long, dark hair. And photos of the murder scenes, the parked cars and lonely sidewalks where the killer has struck in post-midnight hours. Here, too, police are trying to trace the ownership of every snub-nosed 44 in the country, an estimated 28,000 guns. By night, Police saturate neighborhoods where the killer has struck. Disguised as regular neighborhood toughs, they cruise in unmarked cars and check people who are still out long after midnight. The killer's eighth attack in just over 12 months came on this lonely street in Brooklyn. Police poured over the car where the young couple was shot and said fragments of bullets showed they were fired from the same 44 caliber pistol that had wounded six other New Yorkers and left five dead. Aided by light from a full moon, three or four eyewitnesses said they got a look at the killer. They described him as 25 to 35 years old, about 5'8 or a little taller. The victims were 20-year-old Stacy Moskowitz, wounded critically by a shot in the head. And her date, Robert Violanti, also hit in the head. Doctors said he was blinded in one eye. Relatives and friends kept a vigil at the hospital. Anthony Robinson was a friend of Miss Moskowitz. She was a wonderful person. And she's she always thinking of others. You're worried about this guy? Excuse me? 
me, she wasn't worried, you know, because she says, you know, I got blonde hair and, you know, I told her, I don't know how many times, to be careful. Then Robinson addressed the gunman. First of all, you're sick. You're crazy. You're going around shooting the wrong people. In the past year, a psychopathic gunman has killed six people and wounded eight others in New York City. Robert Hager is on the story. As the condition of one of the killer's latest two victims worsened, the parents of Stacy Moskowitz were summoned to the hospital. This evening, Miss Moskowitz, shown here as she was taken into the hospital yesterday, died of massive brain damage. Her date, Robert Violante, will live. He said he got a good look at the killer, but may never be able to identify him because Violante may have been blinded. New York's Mayor Beam directed that a hundred more policemen be added to what's become one of the biggest manhunts in the history of this city. This would, uh, in essence, put approximately a total of 300 of police personnel on a constant, full-time basis just for this investigation. In Brooklyn, where the latest shooting occurred, detectives drew diagrams of the area, places where people may have caught a glimpse of the killer escaping. According to the witnesses that we've talked to over the past uh, 24 hours, he's a male white, 25 to 35, approximately 5'7 to 5'10, a stocky build, and he had light disheveled hair. It's now eight minutes and a few seconds after the hour. The 44 caliber killer on the loose in New York for a year and three days. Robert Hager has the rest of the story. Stacy Moskowitz, a pretty 20-year-old blonde, became the sixth to die in the killer's string of attacks. At the hospital, her father was stunned. I said to you, that's something very dear to me. Great kid. Miss Moskowitz died of massive brain damage. Her mother referred to that. And she would have been a vegetable had she lived. And my daughter loved life too much. And she would never have wanted it that way. And she lived with dignity and she died with dignity. But most important of the people that an animal should snuff away a life of a young girl, blind a young boy, and has killed others and will probably go on killing. An animal like this has to be caught. In New York City, the 44 caliber killer is still at large. The police are no closer than ever to catching the madman who has killed six people and wounded seven. Here is Robert Hager with the latest details. Residential areas all over New York are deserted after midnight now. Fear is spreading as the killer moves into different neighborhoods. By day, it's common to see young women with kerchiefs over their hair or hair pinned up because most of the victims had long hair. Discotheques are losing business. Young people are afraid the killer may select his victims at these places. The most recent attack was early Sunday. The father of Robert Violante, wounded in that attack, has now told his son he may be blind. I came to news about his eyes yesterday and he accepted it, he accepted it like a man. The mother of Stacy Moskowitz, who died yesterday, issued this appeal to the killer. Stop, please stop. Let the young live. Just stop it, stop this madness. He's doing nothing but just hurting innocent people. And I'm not talking about the parents, I'm talking about the children. Police said today they had no new clues. Stacy Moskowitz was buried today, the latest victim of the 44 caliber killer who has terrorized parts of New York for the last year or so. It's after midnight last night. Police Sergeant Pete Dreyer and his partner Frank Farrell, both in plain clothes, check out a man who was cruising through the neighborhood alone. The man leaves his car, the light reflects off a revolver on the man's hip. The man doesn't know anyone with a 44. He's free to go. Neighbors here have also grouped together to ride the streets at night looking for the killer. Among those who patrol is Michael Loria, who's 
18-year-old daughter was killed last summer in the gunman's first known attack. I want to see this guy caught. I figure if I'm on patrol one night, I may spot him. I know what goes on in my heart. I know, what you, I know how I feel. How can I say it? I want this guy caught. Up the street, Sergeant Dreyer and his partner Farrell are back in their car, which is painted to look like a taxi cab. The sergeant is a little apprehensive about the Civic Association riders. But I don't think it's just these particular. I think any group of concerned citizens, uh, some of the uh, most well-meaning uh, citizens that you come across, I think if they got their hands on this guy, they'd be looking to string him right up on the spot. Police, tipped by the Civic Association, pick up a mental patient who's left a state hospital nearby. Four Civic Association cars were there ahead of the police. Now, policemen Dreyer and Farrell are chasing a suspicious car. Yeah, we're going to get this guy. We've got to get the jump on every call. The speedometer hits 90. The neighborhood sleeps, unaware of the chase. But the man Dreyer and Farrell were chasing turns out to be nothing more than a speeder. You just managed to go through our uh, homicide zone. We're working on that. 44 caliber thing. Yeah, but I got my brother, you know. Okay. All, right, All right, thanks a lot. Just slow it down. Man. All right, nice and slow. Another routine night is ending for police and angry neighbors throughout the city. And the killer is still at large. Detectives released the artist's new conception to reporters at midday, both a profile and a full-faced view. It's a lot different from previous sketches, but police say witnesses of the killer's most recent attack got a much better look at the gunman. The face is a little leaner than in past drawings, the hair is dark and wavy, the cheekbones are high, and the eyes almond-shaped. I'm Jane Pauley with Lloyd Dobbins, but first... Lloyd Calver, the news of the arrest of suspect David Berkowitz. Jane, the man's name is David Berkowitz. He is an unmarried 24-year-old postal worker. He's a veteran of Korean service with the United States Army. When he was arrested late last night in his apartment in Yonkers, New York, he told the officers, OK, you've got me. David Berkowitz is expected to be booked, as Jane mentioned, in Brooklyn this morning and formally accused of committing one of, at least one of six murders in the New York area in just the past year. Specifically, they expect him to be booked for the murder of 20-year-old Stacy Moskowitz on July the 31st. In the end, a parking ticket proved to be the undoing for Berkowitz. Here's Robert Hager with more of the story. This is the man police believe to be the son of Sam, the 44 caliber killer who has killed six and wounded seven in a string of attacks over the last 13 months. He was arrested outside his apartment in Yonkers, New York at 10.30 last night and brought to police headquarters about midnight. He is David Berkowitz, a 24-year-old postal worker who lived alone. He was smiling as he was brought in. Detectives displayed a 44 caliber pistol found in Berkowitz's car. Police lab says its tests indicate this was the gun used in the most recent Son of Sam slaying. Uh, ballistics section has just called and told us that the uh, 44 caliber gun recovered tonight has been tested and the bullets match the bullets recovered from Stacy Hospitals. New York's Mayor Beam appeared after midnight. Hey. I'm very pleased to announce that the people of the city of New York can rest easy this morning because of the fact that the police have captured a man whom they believe to be the son of Sam. It was Berkowitz's car that led police to him. It had been ticketed for being parked by a fire hydrant on the night of the most recent murder, just a few blocks from the murder scene. Routinely following up the ticket, police found the car in Yonkers and noticed a 45 caliber machine gun inside and an envelope addressed in the killer's style of handwriting. He was uh, apprehended. He was advised of his rights. And he was advised that he was uh, under arrest, advised of his rights. No, he was, uh, he was re resigned to uh, what appeared to be his fate. Did he make any he made admissions? A, he made a statement along, well, you got me. Besides the 44 pistol and the 45 machine gun, police seized a lot of ammunition at Berkowitz's apartment, along with a folder of press clippings with a poem written on the outside. 
It was well after three o'clock when New York City police walked out with what they would only describe as ballistics evidence. Among other things, they had found a 44 caliber revolver, a 45 caliber machine gun, a rifle, and newspaper clippings of the son of Sam murders. There's a very little, limited amount of furnishing in the apartment. There was uh, just a bed that was on the floor. There's no bed post. A mattress on the floor? Yeah, a mattress on the floor. Any uh, other furniture? Just ordinary kitchen furniture. There's nothing really expensive. Personal like, effects, family pictures? Personal effects, family pictures, uh, pictures of friends, I imagine. 35 Pine Street in Yonkers. A nice building in a nice neighborhood. Apartment 7E was home to David Berkowitz. No one here really knew him, although almost everyone knew who he was. A white man living in a mostly black building. Quiet, perhaps a little strange, but certainly not murderous. You saw him? You knew him? Yes, he was nice. He was a nice man. He always said hello and how we doing and everything. I would never think that he was the son of Sam. Did you see him when they, when they came in to get him? Yes, I did. I you, seen him drive up. You saw him drive up in his car? Yes. Uh-huh. In a yellow car. Right. He drove up, and uh, when he parked, the police, all of them jumped out of the car. They were coming from every direction. They right. jumped out of the car, and they ran over to him, and they put their gun, guns up to him. They put them up to his head, and... Uh, what did he say? He didn't say anything. And so it all seems to fit the image most often offered of the 44 caliber killer. A loner, a man nobody really seemed to know, at least not his neighbors here in Yonkers. They thought they were safe. After all, his target seemed to be the Bronx, Queens, and then Brooklyn. Well, now they are afraid when the rest of New York City and the rest of the country is beginning to relax. The people here in this building are afraid. After all, they live next door to the son of Sam. In Yonkers, this is Carol Jenkins, NBC News. Well, the big news in New York overnight, a man police are pretty sure his son of Sam was arrested in his home in Yonkers and is in police custody now, perhaps by this hour, has in fact been arraigned in Brooklyn. With us this morning is Jimmy Breslin, the New York Daily News reporter and columnist who was uh, the only journalist to have received a letter from son of Sam. That came last May and Mr. Breslin has been deeply involved in the story as a reporter. First of all, this David Berkowitz has been talking to police. Has there been any indication that he was planning yet another attack? Oh, yeah. Last night. Said he was going to, from his house in Yonkers to the Riverdale section of the Bronx, and he was going to do something there. The Sam had commanded him to do it. Sam being apparently a dog that runs his life. And uh, Sam had commanded him to kill there. Then he was going out to the Hamptons to a discotheque and going downstairs with his, uh, going into the place with a, with a machine gun. And he was going to try and go out in a blaze of glory. And I mean, now you're talking. You said an awful lot. First of all, he was arrested at, what, 10.30? Yeah, which, sure is, which is maybe two hours, three hours before the time he has chosen to strike in the yeah. past. And in his car was found a fully loaded 44. Yeah. And a submachine gun? Yeah, but two clips. Submachine gun with plenty of he wanted to take 40 or 50 people 40 out 50 last people. night. Has he told police that this would have been his last? He would, assu he would assume after a, a, a massive attack like that to have been caught? I don't oh. know. I don't I think don't, so. I, I think no. he would want to go on. As, I mean, hopefully he would want to go on. Well, tell me more about this Sam. Sam is a dog? That Sam is a, is a 6,000 year old something who's almost human. And he talks to him through his dog. It's Sam's dog that tells him what Sam wants. And he, but, but he tells you all this in a very rational, straightforward tone. Like, you know, yesterday I went to the grocery and I got three boxes of uh, whatever. Uh, so this dog talks to me and tells me and gives me a message when I must go out and kill. And... The, the, the attacks then are specified by the dog, but the victims are, were pretty random. Absolutely yeah. random. But... Yeah, there, there was one in Forest Hills. The, co the college girl was coming home and, uh, from the subway and he... He shot her, but he passed two people. For, he passed two people. He didn't shoot them because he was commanded only to shoot her. He said, "No, no, oh, this was they... some piece of work you walk in the streets here." What do you know about him other than what we know? The details. Twenty-four years old, postal worker. Uh, name. Do you know well, more about he, him? He was in the service. He was uh, in Korea. He was not in combat. He did learn how to fire from the combat crouch. He went down to Houston, Texas to visit an army buddy and bought the gun about two months before the first shooting. He bought the gun because it was in his price range. He could afford that or, or a 38 and decided to buy the 40. The machine gun, where in the world did it come from? Uh, that I'm not sure. See, the machine gun has not committed any no. crimes other than its possessions. So I guess they weren't as worried about the machine gun. Is he... Why the... go to discotheques, 
Is he the same man who would go to discotheques, pick out his victims at the discotheques? No. No, apparently. I just roamed no, the neighborhoods at no, night. No, he roamed. Yeah. He roamed. This he guy hunted. The word he kept using was he hunted. Okay. And, and he hunted apparently 30 nights a month. Yeah. I mean, the fact that he only struck once every 40 days on the average of 45 days was just, you know, our good fortune because he was out every night. Heard from the NBC News Center in New York. Good evening. David Berkowitz, 24 spent his days sorting letters in the post office so meek and mild and quiet nobody ever noticed him and spent his nights the police say roaming the streets of new york city with a 44 revolver shooting young people and killing six of them he has been arrested and tonight he is in a mental hospital he had terrorized the city for 13 months when they brought him in a crowd gathered on the sidewalk demanding his life he had a faint smile as police moved him around the city today, from rest to booking to court, finally to a mental ward. Police were jubilant. 44 caliber bulldog. Just after midnight, about two hours after the arrest, they displayed the 44 caliber pistol they said they found in Berkowitz's car. They said lab tests indicated it was the gun used in the killing. They found a folder in Berkowitz's apartment with a poem written on it in handwriting that matched earlier letters from the killer. They found hundreds of rounds of ammunition and two more guns, including a 45 caliber machine gun detective said Berkowitz planned to use in his next attack, which they said was planned for a Long Island discotheque. In the end, it was something as simple as this $25 parking ticket that led police to Berkowitz. Police had ticketed his car for parking too close to this fire hydrant, a block and a half from the most recent killing, on the same night as the killing, July 31st. A routine follow-up of the ticket led police to Berkowitz's car, parked in front of his Yonkers, New York apartment. And when police discovered the machine gun and a letter in the car, 15 detectives staked out the apartment and car. For now, Berkowitz is formally charged for only the latest of the 44 caliber attacks. He's accused of second-degree murder, attempted murder, assault, and possession of a deadly weapon. In court for a brief arraignment, Berkowitz was surrounded by dozens of detectives and uniformed police. By now, his face was flushed and his eyes a little puffy, but there was still the trace of a smile. Two lawyers said they'd been hired by relatives to defend him. The judge ordered him committed for psychiatric examination. Tonight, Berkowitz is being held here in a specially secured building of the Kings County Hospital in Brooklyn to begin what could be up to 30 days of testing to determine his mental competency. It's the same hospital where Stacy Moskowitz died just 10 days ago. The 24-year-old son of Sam was adopted. He attended Columbus High School in the Bronx. It's closed for the summer, and no one who remembered Berkowitz was around today. Community College came next. It's also in the Bronx, and Berkowitz attended here for almost a year before dropping out, joining the Army, and going to Korea. Students told us that some teachers had retrieved some of Berkowitz's old schoolwork and were passing it around today, mostly poems. David Berkowitz landed a job operating a mail sorting machine at the Bronx Post Office a few months ago. Co-workers today were shocked to learn that Berkowitz could be the son of Sam. He first started working here was about six months ago. The uh, foreman told me to break him in and show him what to do on the, you know, processing the mail and the collection. And uh, we worked together for about two or three months and like we sat and had coffee together. And he, he, he did a lot of, you know, talking mostly about, he liked to go fishing and uh, he did a lot of reading, he liked to read, no, I think mostly novels, you know, and uh, the only thing he ever said about Son of Sam was that uh, he, he advised one girl to put her hair up in a bun, that she shouldn't wear long hair because that's what Son of Sam was after, girls with long hair. You know? So to Berkowitz co-workers and friends and others, the man and his motivation remain a mystery. The thousands of policemen who were hunting for Berkowitz did not know that he had received training as an auxiliary New York City policeman, learning some law and some unarmed defense tactics. He learned about guns in the U.S. Army, where he served as a rifleman in the 2nd Infantry Division in Korea in 1971 and 72. Presumably now, he won't use any more guns, and that pleases a lot of New Yorkers. Lee McCarthy has that part of the story. 
New York began feeling relief at 1.30 this morning when Mayor Beam announced the arrest. I'm very pleased to announce that the people of the city of New York can rest easy this morning because of the fact that the police have captured a man whom they believe to be the son of Sam. John Deal, whose girlfriend, Christine Freund, was murdered in January, said the arrest was good news for everybody. I feel very, very good about it, that uh, everybody can, be, can walk, you know, or go out with their date safe again now, you know. Some of us had to, uh, you know, suffer through this. At the Brooklyn home of Stacy Moskowitz, the last person murdered, her mother praised the police, but added that the family's life will never be the same. It's a very difficult thing to resume anything normal afterward, as far as I'm concerned anyway. You just can't pick up uh, nothing pieces when there's no pieces to pick up. New Yorkers saw the arrest as a release for New York's young women and their parents. I was getting a little worried since I have short, length, short length brown hair and everything. But now I feel much, much better. Thank you, Jane. Good morning, everyone. David Berkowitz, the 24-year-old postal worker, alleged to be the night killer known as Son of Sam, is undergoing mental tests under heavy guard in a New York City hospital today. Berkowitz, who was captured late Wednesday night after a year-long police hunt, reportedly has confessed to the string of six murders and seven uh, assaults that terrorized the nation's biggest city. More on that story now from Lee McCarthy. As news of the arrest of the 44 caliber killer spread, New Yorkers were generally relieved. But at the Brooklyn home of Robert Violante, who was blinded in the killer's last attack, Violante's mother said the arrest left one question unanswered. All I know I would say to him would be one word, why? Just why? As people talked about the case on the streets of Manhattan, young women and their parents were once again at ease. Oh, I feel much safer walking the streets of New York. Much safer, you know, I can go out at night and go to the discotheques and just feel better about it. I don't have to worry that my parents were very worried that I couldn't go out at night. I was always home. Went to sleep early. Berkowitz's court-appointed lawyer, Philip Peltz, spent several hours yesterday with the accused killer and described him as tired and subdued. Meantime, the 44 caliber Bulldog revolver found in Berkowitz's car has been traced to Houston, Texas. And we have a more on that now from George Lewis. Police say the gun used in the killings came from this pawn shop in Houston. It was bought last year by a local construction worker, Billy Dan Parker, a close friend of David Berkowitz. The people who run the pawn shop say they sell a lot of handguns. And they were surprised that one of their weapons was used in the Son of Sam killings. And I was watching the news before I come to work, and, you know, they were talking like I was really glad that they caught the killer, and then I was one that answered the phone when, uh, you know, the Treasury Department called about the gun, and, like, I was shocked. But you, you don't ever think about something like that coming from your hometown, much less your own store, you know. What precautions do you use to make sure that the wrong kind of people don't buy guns? Well, you just kind of question a person, like you might ask them, like, were well, you going to use the gun for home protection? Or Usually most people don't buy a gun like that for home protection, though, no, because it's such a big bore. You know, a 44 caliber is a big pistol.